OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, so thank you everybody for being here and thank you to OTAN, OTAN for the opportunity to present and participate uh, during the TDLS this year. I am not able to be there in person at uh, Tula Vista, but I'm very happy with the opportunity to present online. And I hope we'll have a great time here today presenting and uh, sharing our experiences and learning also. Uh, so I'm Cristiane Galvão. I live in Thousand Oaks and I'm an ESL teacher here at the Conejo Valley Adult Education. Um, if you wanna learn a little bit more about me, I have a QR code and I have a link to my LinkedIn too that I can send uh, in the chat box later for you to take a look. And thank you so much for taking your time to be here. So the title of my presentation is Using Bamboozle Games to Engage Beginning Literacy ESL Students. Um, my experience as an ESL teacher is mainly uh, with beginners. And also I work as an ESL support teacher in the medical programs and uh, medical courses at school. And before that, I was an ESL teacher in Brazil for almost 13 years. So I'm gonna bring here a little bit of my experience working with um, Bamboozle with my beginning students at Conejo Valley Adult Education. And I hope you all enjoy the presentation. I'm just adjusting my light, I'm sorry. So I hope you all uh, enjoy the presentation and um, we'll have a great time here. So before um, we go to our warm up activity, because as an ESL teacher, I always like to have and to uh, do a warm up activity with my students. So I'm going to talk about the agenda a little bit and then we'll do a super quick warm up activity. So uh, the agenda today is about bamboozle. I'm going to keep it simple and practical because I know that um, especially for a follow along workshop, we have to be very simple and practical so everybody follows and everybody uh, does something that's useful after the, the presentation. Something You can create something that's useful uh, in your classes after our workshop today. Um, so I, like, I, I chose Bamboozle because it's an online teaching resource that facilitates student-centered learning and um, I'm going to follow some steps here, but I'm not gonna be speaking a lot about my experience. I will share my experience along the process while we, we uh, produce or create a new game. So um, I'm going to talk about what is Bamboozle and what can you teach using Bamboozle? Why Bamboozle, some of the benefits, how I use it in my classes and how to group these students to play bamboozle. And then we'll have the hands-on. You will create your own bamboozle game and I will show you step-by-step step how to create your game. And then hopefully we'll have some games ready by the end of the session, or at least you'll, you will have started your own games and we'll share the link uh, on a Padlet that I created for you to link, uh, for you to share the link there and share with everybody. So let's go to our warm up activity. So for you online, you can use the chat box, please. You can use the chat box on Zoom. And for the participants in person, you can give a thumbs up. I think I can see some of you there. I don't see many people, yay. So I have some questions for you. So have you used bamboozle games? And what do you like about, you like the most about bamboozle games? 
And I would like also to know if you have created your own bamboozle game because some people might have created already and they are here just to learn more. And some people might have not even heard about it, right? So I would like to know about your experience. So let me take a look here in the chat box. So never used, no and no, no, never used, never used. Wow, I have never used. Okay, so I hope this is going to be a great experience and you will, um have another resource to use in your lessons uh in person and online because bamboozle promotes um the opportunity for you to use not only in person but also online so thank you for answering the questions and so let me start uh what about there in the room has anybody used bamboozle or created no all right, so I hope you enjoy it and maybe we'll start using it soon. All right, thank you. So let's go to the, my first slide. So what is Bamboozle? Bamboozle is an online platform with pre-made games. So I here, I took a screenshot of the main page for you to take a look. So the games, uh, they are presented in like a tiles like this. So you can choose and there's also a search for you to search for specific topics. Uh, it's very simple and easy to use. You have the free and paid options, so you can also subscribe to use it. I use the free version, but I'm really tempted to using the to get in the paid version because of other features that they have. And I will talk about that a little more during the presentation. So Bamboozle gives you an opportunity to work in person or online, as I said before, and you create teams in the classroom or you can also work individually. Your students can also work individually. Um, and I will explain how you can do that also. And one thing that I like about Bamboozle is that if you are using the games that are pre-made and are and are on the platform, you can you don't need to log in. You just click on the, uh, you just, I usually go to Google because for some reason I keep forgetting to save the link. And I go to Google and I type bamboozle games and then I find the link and I go. So you click on the page. Once you are there, you can use search to choose the topic. We are going to go to the page in a moment. I'm just going to go uh, continue presenting and not go yet there, just so I can I introduce you to the platform first, and then we'll take a look at it together. So what can you do with Bamboozle? So for you who have never used it, uh, it's a great platform for you to teach, or it means you can introduce new, new topics, new content to your students, or you can only, you can use it to review the review vocabulary, grammar. You can also do a quiz or you can also use it for conversation and reading comprehension. Uh, my experience with my ESL beginners, with the beginning uh, level students, is that um, I have used more, more uh, Bamboozle more for vocabulary and grammar and also to quiz them. I haven't prepared one for reading comprehension yet, but I'm planning on that. And for conversation, I have not used yet, but I know it's, it also allows you to do that depending on the kind of questions you ask, because I've been looking at other uh, games online too. So you use the game, so uh, at the beginning or at the end of your class. I love warm up activities. So I usually use uh, Bamboozle at the beginning of my lesson. So the students um, review what they learned previously and they can also kind of get ready for, for the day because I teach in the evening and in the morning. But my, uh, my evening group is like, they come from work, everybody's tired, you know? So I, got, I, I love to do something right at the very beginning to engage them and with Bamboozle, you can also assign the study option or you can assign as homework, you can do icebreakers. 
and students can study while they wait for their classmates to finish their Yale Civics. So for example, it's Yale Civics Day, they're doing their task one, for example, they finish task one, some students will finish faster, they will finish and then you can give them the option to play on Bamboozle uh, to wait for their, while they wait for their classmates. So it's, it's, it's very um, easy for them too. And I'll show you also. So here in this picture, I think it's a small, it's a small image, I'm sorry, but I'll show you there also. So if you choose the study option, it shows the image and the question. And here there's a little magnifying glass and the students click there to see the answer. So it's a great way for you to not have students not doing anything in class while you are waiting for everybody to finish their Yale civics or any other activity that you had planned. And I really like it because I use it mostly for review also. So uh, whenever I teach a unit, a lesson, I, I finish the unit, I use a bamboozle to review with them. So, and why? So why do I choose, I chose to use bamboozle? I actually, uh, I learned about bamboozle, I think during the pandemic, I was teaching virtually. And I think it was at that time, because I have used it so many times that I can't recall exactly when I started using it, but it was not, too long ago. So beginner ESL students need engaging activities, especially if we are working uh, with students who come from work or their parents and they come to class and they feel like tired. So it's nice to have something that engages them and not only um, having them there sitting and looking at us, there's not only the teaching talking time. And so it's, in, it's very important to engage them. And for beginners, because the communication for some is still very limited, the game will provide uh, a moment for them to interact more with the, their classmates too. So I love Bamboozle because it's a visual resource. It helps low beginners or, be, or beginning literacy students to connect the image to the writing and spelling of the words. So students also recognize numbers and say them in English. Because when you assign teams and you show the tiles, I'm going to show you also, the students have to call up for a number. So they, they say a number. So when they say the number, they're practicing English. So for example, I had students saying the numbers in their home language. And I said, no, let's use this opportunity for you to practice the numbers because you already know the numbers. We already studied the numbers. So it's time for them to practice that. And it's also uh, a moment for them to learn how to take turns. So it's great because they learn how to wait. And also if they're shy, they don't feel like they're the only ones uh, that need to speak. Some of them will feel more like they don't wanna participate much, but in a team, in a group, things are better for those who are not, uh, who don't participate much. And they practice raising their hands to answer to a question too. So students feel that they are a part of a group. So I like that a lot. And I always feel so happy when I see my students interacting and helping each other during the game. So other benefits, uh, as I said before, it's visual because it has images and words. And when you create your game, it's important to find meaningful images or GIFs, because that will help your students to connect the spelling to the image or the question to the answer. So the images are really important. And also, I also use complete sentences to model correct usage of the language. So for example, here we used, um, I created a game for us to review um, the, the task that we were going to do for the Yale Civics. So it was digital literacy. So I created a bamboozle and one of the, the tasks was they had to learn acronyms, abbreviations, internet language. So I use this one here that says BRB and then um, what does BRB mean? So when I clicked, 
or after they answered, I click on the answer and it shows the full sentence. So I don't know if it's just me, but I really like my students to use complete sentences and also um, to answer the, the, the questions in full sentences. So um, after, they, after we play the game and they get the answer right, the answer correct, I ask them to read the sentence. And I also work on pronunciation. Sometimes depending on the words, I ask them to spell. So that way they, they learn how to spell some difficult words for them too. So for the Yale Civics, um, the game should match the practice that students do in the classroom. So that's the advantage of you creating your own bamboozle because you know your context, you know what your, your students need and you know what you're going to to be uh, teaching, so you prepare your own. Uh, you can also uh, look for some ready ones on, uh, on the platform, but sometimes it doesn't match really well what you need for your lesson, for your class. Okay, so I really like it that it also develops academic and social skills. As I said before, they recognize numbers, they take turns, and they work in teams and groups. So here, this picture shows um, the platform when the students are going to play. So this is after you chose, after you choose the topic and it shows team one and team two. You can also assign up to four teams on Bamboozle in the free, in the free version. So here I divide the class in groups and then uh, we play. So team one, chooses a number, I click on the number and it shows the question. I'm going to show everything in a moment. So social emotional skills also, it helps, it promotes interaction. So for example, as I said before, for the warm up activity, these students, they become motivated for the day and they are ready to start their, their time in school with more motivation and participating more. And for students who come late to, I like the, the warm up because if some students come a little late to class, they get there and we are playing. So it's not like they have to find out where we are. They just start playing there. And then after that, we start our lesson. So uh, students help each other. They feel empowered because they always help each other and they, um, enjoy together, they celebrate. And when I, when I play at the end, the students go home happy. And I love that. I love to see my students um, leaving happy and um, motivated to come back because that's also another challenge. We have to always uh, make sure that they're learning, they're engaged, so they want to continue. So, um, for the how, I divide it into parts. So I have part one, um, how can you teach using Bamboozle? So first you're going to search for games that match the units that you are teaching, the lessons that you need to teach. Uh, one strategy that I use is I divide groups into teams. So as I said before, on Bamboozle, you can share, uh, um, sorry, you can split uh, up to four teams. So you can use up to four teams. And I usually use two. So in person, I use, this, I use sticky notes to assign numbers to each team. So I count the number of my students in class and then I divide that number by two. Or in, if you decide to do more, you can divide the number by, by three or four to create teams. So the students get together according to the number that they have on their sticky note. So they work together. This way, they're not always working with the same students. So there, there are always different groups uh, playing. And so after I give each student a, a sticky note, they sit together and we start the game. For, um, Another strategy is just dividing the group, very simple, as I said, keep it simple and practical. Uh, you just divide the class into two teams. So for example, I say 
from here to there, this side is team one and this side is team two. Okay, because the first strategy of giving them the sticky notes with the numbers, I use mostly because I want them to work with different students. But if your time doesn't allow you and you, you need all, oh, you, you just need to play with them for like five or seven minutes, you just divide the class in super quick. And so you divide the class into two teams. And then if you're playing online, if you teach online, uh, you can also ask the students to rename. So they use the rename option on Zoom and you can use the list, the participants list to assign the students number. So for example, if you decide on two teams on Zoom, which I think is better than four teams or three, you have two teams. If you have the, the settings, you, um, uh, how can I say? If you can change the names yourself, you can assign the numbers yourself, or you can tell the students, you call them by their names and you say you're number one, you're number two, until you have uh, a number of students in each team. So that way you have two teams on Zoom. And when you share your screen, you start the game and they know when they're going to raise their hand so they can use the raise hand feature on Zoom to, to, to choose a number and to answer the questions. So uh, this is um, mostly what I had prepared to share with you. But before we go and create our accounts, I would like to ask if you have any questions and you please could, uh, could you please um, type in the chat box or if anybody in the audience has a question. So please feel free to ask me. So we can uh, start creating the accounts. So I don't see any questions here. Are you going to demonstrate once just what it looks like? The yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I was thinking if we would maybe we wouldn't have time to create. I, I was worried about not having enough time to create an, an account and create the games, but we can do it now. We could do a, a little uh, demonstration now. So let me let me do that. Thank you for asking. And um, so let me go here to my link where I can, sorry, my computer keeps. So please just please let, let me stop sharing and I will open my link and then I'm going to share again. Okay. So this is the main page on, on Bamboozle. So this is the main page, okay? Because I have an account already. So whenever I'm logged in, it's going to show here my library. So I have some games. So these are the games that I have prepared. And one of them, I was surprised because I prepared like on a Sunday and by Tuesday, there were like 200 plays already. And I was like, oh, this is so good. Now it's on 406 and it was featured. So I really, I, I was so motivated by that too. So it's great to share and um, know that it's, it's useful to other teachers. So let's see here, let me see. Uh, I'm going to choose this one here, places in town. So let me just go back for a second. So this is the main page. Once you see all the games that are available there, you choose one or you can search. So for example, I want to find one game about, uh, let's see, um, food. So let me write, type food here and then I click on search. So the, oh, this is my page. So if it's my page, I'm not gonna find one. So I have to go to the, ba the main page and type here. I'm sorry about that. So food, and then I click on search. So it's going to show a lot of games about food. 
So let me choose this one here. So I'm going to click on this one. This one, use the feature where they hide the image. So you can also do that. You can, oh no, actually it's showing now. I think it's just my internet that's slow because there is one feature that you can hide the image and I'll show you that later. So here, for example, um, you assign the groups, you assign the, the, the teams. So maybe uh, let's play a little bit here. Let's see if you're on Zoom. Let me see. Okay, I'm not going to create two teams, but I'm going to show you how you play. So if you chose and you want to work with this one, you click on play. Once you click on play, it's going to show here, play for free, that's what I use, because Bamboozle has many other features. So they have the snakes and ladders, the World Cup soccer, double vision, story dice, four in a row, and the memory game, which it's probably really good. I haven't used the bingo, tic-tac-toe. So I use the free version. So I click here on play for free. And then once I'm here, I choose the number of teams. So as I said before, I have the option in the free version, I have the option to choose any uh, uh, up to four. So I'm going to choose two teams. And then I click here on my grid size. So if I want only eight questions, I click on eight, 16 or 24. And there's also the power apps. So you can always choose the power apps here. I usually don't choose it. I just uh, start playing and whatever it's already on the game that the person who created the game has there saved, that's what I use. Okay, but you can also use. And by the way, um, I usually uh, leave the way it is because I'm using the numbers, as I said before, because I'm teaching beginners. I want my students to have access to the numbers because if I change uh, the themes also, uh, it won't show the numbers, it will show the images. And if I change the power apps, it might show a lot of power apps instead of the questions. And I prefer having more questions than the power apps. So as I said, I keep it simple and I just use what's ready. So I click here on classic and there you go. So that's very simple. It's like three steps, the search and then looking for something that you want You click on that and then you assign the group, uh, uh, the teams and the, how many tiles you want and you start and you divide the teams and you start the game. So, for example, if I click on number four, it's showing the image and I ask my students, what is it? So team one answers, it's cheese. So we click on okay. Now team two chooses a number. Now, for example, they say number nine, I click on number nine, what is it? And let's say they say, uh, a different word, like if they don't say it's peach, they say it's uh, mango, let's suppose. So I say, no, it's peach. And then I click, oops. So they lose the points. So another one, what is it? And then it's water. And so if they, correct, if they answer correctly, I click okay. So there you go. And the points will be recorded here and at the end, they show a fun, a fun image like a gift or something and the students celebrate together. So let me just click one more here and see. So what is it? So I, and you, if you click on the image, it also maximizes the image, which is good because um, your students can see better on the screen what, what the image is. And then you check. So if they got it correctly, you click uh, OK. All right, so this is how it is. And at the end, they have the, the, the final number here and it shows the winners. So let me just stop here for a second and go back to my slides. All right, so we're going to do a hands-on now. And I would like you to please, if you want, you can use the QR code 
or you can use the link. Let me put the link in the chat box so you can sign up. Ah, there is a question. Do, do students need to type their answers? No, they don't. In this case, you, the teacher, you are leading the game. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. You are, you are leading the game. So the students only say it. So it's great because they are active looking at it and they are interacting with each other to choose the number that they want to choose but they don't type. So they're not using their devices. When they are using their devices for the study portion of the, the, the game, if you assign the, the study portion, the platform, uh, it, they, don't, they don't type, they only check their answers. So you can ask them to write their answers on their notebooks, for example, before they check the answer. Um, so I just put the, the link to Bamboozle in the chat box. And if you are uh, watching in person uh, from the school, please uh, feel free to use the QR code. You can use the QR code to, to get to the page. So, once you are there, let me go to the page to show you use the steps you are going to take. Here, I'm going to go back to the main page. That's where you're going to be. I have to actually log out so I can show you. I'm going to sign out so I can show you where you're going to go. So once you are on Bamboozle, you are going to click on join for free. You can use this one too. You can click here where it says join for free. So you click here and it's going to ask you for your email, your password, and then to confirm your password and then you create your username. After that, you click on join for free. Once you join for free, you are going to um, receive an email from Bamboozle. You will receive an email to confirm your, your account. So maybe should I give you some minutes, like four or five minutes to create your account, please? Would you like that? So please let me know in the chat box how you're doing. If you have created your account, it's very simple, but you will actually need, if you're going to create a game, okay, thank you. If you're going to create a game, you need to have uh, an account. It will only let you use the games without an account, but if you are creating a new game, it actually needs you to create an, an account. So let me set the let me set the timer here for four minutes. So let's start. Okay. Um, so let me go here to the main page where you start your account. Okay, just please let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, it's shown there. All right, so I'm going to sign in as I have my account already saved here, and I'm going to show you the steps, okay? So for you to create a game, the very first thing you're going to do is you are going to click, you're going to sign in once you're on the main page. Okay, you're going to be here on this main page, right? So you are going to click on my library. Can you see my library there? And you are going to, okay, wonderful. So you are going to click here where it says plus game, sorry. So there's the plus sign and game. So you click there. 
And once you are on that page, that's when you start. So here's the title. So you're going to, um, let me make this bigger. Okay, so there's the title. So let's say I'm going to create one, a simple one. What is, sorry, what is this? What are these? That's what I'm teaching my students right now. So what is this and what are these? So this is the title. And then for the description, you could um, use um, like answer the questions. Using it's um, it's and or they are. Okay, this I'm just doing. Let me use instead of what is the this is better. Okay. So answer the questions using it's a, it's and, or they are. And then once you write the description, you have to write the description because if you don't write the description, it won't let you proceed, okay? Uh, you can choose the language. So in my case, we're going to use English, but I could also click here to choose different languages, okay? So if you want to plan or create games in different languages, you can also do that. The tags I usually add at the end after I created my game. I usually don't do it right away. And now you can click on image library. Once you, you click on the image library, it will show the GIFs or stickers. But there's one thing about Bamboozle Free it won't let you use many GIFs, okay? Most of the time I use stickers. So uh, most of the time I, I, I click on the image and it says the, big is too big, the image is too big, so it won't let me use for the, for the free version. So what do you do? You click here and let's say I wanna type flowers, just to have flowers on my cover. So I'm going to choose one. So just to demonstrate, let me click here on this one or this one. And then that's what I was saying, image too big. So you have to upgrade to use it. So what I do, I usually use the stickers because with stickers, you have more options also. You have some options and it's um, usually, it usually works right away. So let me get this one. Oh, this one is also saying it's too hard. Sometimes it takes a while. Okay, this one, it, it worked. So after you choose the image here, you click on make game. So now my game is created. So new game made, now add some questions to it. So once, so here you have question and then you have a place to put the answer. So let's suppose I'm going to ask, what are these? And then I type the answer. They are, they are flowers. Let's suppose, I'm gonna start with flowers again. They are flowers. So once I type the, the sentence here for the answer, I click on image library. So I click here and then I choose, I'm also going to go to speakers because as I said, it's, we have more options that way. So I'm going to choose the flowers that I want to use. And there they are. So they are embedded to the, to the game now. And here you choose how many points you would like to give. So yes, you can search for images and stickers. So this is how it works. You go, um, once you type the answer here, okay, you click on image library and you can also delete what you typed. So let's suppose you wanna change. You don't want, they are flowers. You just wanna add like roses. Let's suppose you wanna show roses. So you type roses and then it shows you all the, 
the image is available. And as I said, some of them won't be actually available if you're not on the paid version. So let me click here and there they are. So they are flowers. So I put it, I, I, they're embedded and now I choose the points. So for example, I want to assign five points to this one or 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to assign 25 because I'm sure my students know this and they will do well. So I'm going to assign 25. So this is a, a very, very important step here. Once you finish doing, typing the question, the answer and assigning the points, you click on save, okay? So once you click on save, it will show here your first question. So it's ready there. Now you have two options to do the next one. You can come here and type again, like for example, what are these? Or you can click here on this, like this waffle, the little waffle here, I'll call it waffles or toasts. So you click on them and you can copy this question that you had previously created, okay? So it will show here exactly how you had typed the first one. So then you just add it. So for example, now I, I did flowers already. So I'm just going to put here, uh, they are, let's see, uh, pencils. So they are pencils. So now I click on the image library. So just reviewing the steps. Question, answer, image library. So once you click there, it's going to show pencils and you choose the best image. So let me try this one. It worked. So once it disappears, you know it's in the, in the game, okay? If it doesn't, if it's not in the game, it's going to show as before, like this is too big, the image is too big. And now you decide if you wanna keep them all 25, you, can, you don't need to change here anymore. Or if you wanna assign like 15 points to this question, you just click on 15 and then you uh, save. So keep looking at the screen so you'll see. Once you save, it shows here. Now I have pencils and flowers. And now just to save time, I'm going to copy the same one if I'm doing another one in the plural. So I'm going to copy this one and there it is. It shows the question and the answer. I just added the answer now. So let's say they are um, computers. I'm not doing in the same category here. I'm just using random words just to demonstrate. But if you're working with a specific vocabulary, you will keep looking for the same category or if, you're, you, uh, if you are using a certain verb, verb tense, you will keep repeating the question and looking for images that represent that uh, question. So for example, what are these? They are computers. So once I typed the answer, I click on image library. And the here, let's see one that shows more than one computer or, and sometimes you can't find the image that you want. Like it's not all the time that you're going to be lucky and find exactly what you need, right? So you can always change the words too. For example, I don't want computers, I want something else. So you can always add it, you go back. So let's suppose I'm looking here and I don't find the image that I want. I don't like the images, I don't wanna use them. So I can change here, I'm going to change to, they are, let's say, something easy to find. They are, uh, oh my goodness, paper clips. So let's see, paper clips. All right, so I'm going to click on the image library again. And now it's going to show me stickers with paper clips. So let me try to see if this one works. It worked. So I save it and there it is. So yeah, th there's a question. Uh, can we get images from Google? Yes, but in the paid version. I mean, I wouldn't use some images 
um, if I have to save a lot of images, like I have to go and look for them, I like to use uh, Pexels or Pixabay uh, instead of Google. And you can, but it takes a while too. It gives you an opportunity. You can click here, you know, where it says choose file. If you have the, the, the images saved on your computer, you can click on choose file. So once you click choose file, it will bring your computer um, folders and you will choose the images from there. But that's mostly for the paid version also, okay? So the free version is a little limited, but if you're using the paid version, yes, you can use images that you saved on your computer, you can use from Pexel or, or Pixabay. And you can also use images. Uh, if you create cards, um, images on Canva, you can also save those and download and upload them here. So there are many ways you can do it. I usually use their library because it's easier because it just shows there. I don't need to, to have the I mean, to go and look for more images and save the images and uh, do a lot of work because it usually takes me mainly probably 30 minutes to create a set of like 12, unless I'm not lucky and I'm not finding anything that I like, but it usually doesn't take too long to create a set. And um, also um, you can, I'm going to show you here a different way you can do it. See here where it says image options. If you click here, you can also, instead of typing the answer here, you can use the answer, uh, an image as an answer. So for example, I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to click here on the image library and I'm going to type um, candies. So once I have images of candies here, but this is for a different kind of game because for example, for this, what is this and what are these, you have to show the image, right? But if you're creating a game and you don't wanna show the images, you only want to show the questions, you can do that. So for example, if I click here uh, and then I go and I save it, this one, when you go play, it will not show the image on the screen. Let me show you how it's going to look like, just so you, you have an idea. See this one? Now it's not showing the image, okay? So if you click on answer with the image, that has to be a different kind of question. So here, when you click, the image shows, okay? So there's also that option you can not uh, show the image. So I'm going to delete this one because I was just, um, I just created it to, to demonstrate how to not use the image. But um, for this activity here, we, we use the images because we need them, right? Okay, uh, how are we doing? Is everybody following okay? Am I going too fast? How is it? So, I'm, thank you, Laura. All right, so here, I went back to my main screen. So if you, if you go, if it, if you go to, if you go to your uh, main screen again, if you click on your main screen, you have to click here on edit to continue your game. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm glad everything's doing okay and, and working for you. Okay, so let me see here. Now I'm going to create a singular one. So what is this? Okay, now I'm gonna use computer because I saw many computers there, but only one in each image. So it is, or it's a computer. So, I'm going to click on my image library or, and now I can add it here too, because I just want the word computer. I don't want the sentence because 
if I type only the word, the specific word, it will give me more options, so show me more. So here, let's see, I'm gonna choose this one. Let's see if it will, this one. Okay, it's there. Now I'm going to decide, I'm going to choose 20 points for this one, and I'm going to save. So basically, how many steps do we have to create? We have one, two, three, if you decide to change, you don't even need to change this if you don't want. So one, two, three, and four with the save, right? Or if you're creating a different kind of game, you can do answer with image and you leave here blank. You don't write the answer here, okay? Yes, so unfortunately for the images, uh, some, uh, I see here, Anila commented, I don't find relevant free images. Yes, unfortunately, sometimes the images are not too good, the ones we find free, right? So uh, I try to look a lot like when I'm creating the, the game, that's why I like to go to stickers and, not, and the stickers are not always good. So that's what I said before. It's, um, it's mostly for vocabulary. But if you're working uh, grammar, or if you want to ask for verb tenses, for example, like here, let me show you my game here, where I used to ask questions in the present continuous tense, for example. So what is she doing? She is swimming. So this one is actually a pretty good image. The students can actually understand. It's clear to what the action is, right? This one, what are they doing? They are dancing. Now, what is the dog doing? It is jumping. What are they doing? They are running. So sometimes I create my games based on what I see, like what I find, because then I have a better, uh, I use better images that way. But I agree with you. Uh, I, you will see, let's take a look here at the main page again. You will see that some, some games, let, these are the featured games. You will see that some games have better images than others, because I think that the person is probably using the paid version, okay? Like this one, or for adults, I, I always like to show something that's not too childish, like images that are not just appropriate for children. So I try to find something that's more for the adult education. And so once you start uh, searching, you will start finding better games with better images. And if you decide to use images um, that if you want to use your own images, and then yeah, you you could be using the the upgrade. You could upgrade to use better images. And I I I think I'm gonna do that because I'm starting to we're starting to advance more with verb tenses and things like that. And I like to have always have a good material. So. Uh, if you're, so if you were trying to create a game and maybe you're, so you have to go to the, you have to sign up. If you haven't signed up, it won't let you create a new game. But if you are signed up and you click on, on your library, it's going to show up there, library, you click on games, you have to click on plus game. And then we'll go through that, the, the, the stage of the description, creating the title. So let's continue on this one. Let me create one that they will use. So here, for example, I have all of them here because I went back to the new page, to the, I'm sorry, to the main page. If I want to edit my game, I have to click here on this pencil. So once I click on the pencil, it will bring me back to my, to my game. 
okay, that I am creating. So I'm going to type here, what is this? And then the answer, let's say it's, so they can use an, it's an eraser, let's suppose. So it's an eraser. So now I click on image library. And sometimes it, I don't know, it looks like it's happening right now. It kind of fr freezes the image and it doesn't let me search. So I close here and I click again. And then I click, I click inside the search box and I press enter. Let's see if it's gonna work now. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. So that's a bamboozle thing. You have to be patient too. Um, let me try again. Let me click on get okay. out oh, there you go. So it's better to change here because then, or maybe they don't have any stickers. Okay, there you go. As I said before, if you type only the, the word, the specific word, it might come, it might bring up options for you. So you click here, let me get a, an eraser. Let me choose this one and there you go. Now I assign the numbers, the points, and then I save. I saved one by accident, it wasn't ready. Okay, so let, by now I have one, two, three, four, five. Do you have one? How many do you have so far? Anybody has any already? Wow, wonderful chat host said this. They have 10, excellent. Okay. Just type here. Okay, so let's see. I'll create one more and then I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint just to show you a little more what I have prepared to share. And um, let's see here. So one more, with, what's this? So let's say it's a binder. Let's see. Here. I'm going to assign 25 points, choose the image. And as I said, I'm going to look for specific words because that way it's easier to find more. Let's check the stickers. I think I'm gonna use notebook then because when I see an image that I like, I usually change because then it's quicker that way. So then I save and there you go. So now if I go to my main page, if I click here, my library games, it's going to show here the game and I have the, the images and the questions there. So I had mentioned that you could use the study version also. Here's the study. If you click here, it shows like this. So you can um, give the links to your students for them to access and they can practice what they learned. So you can play the game and then give them the study uh, link. And here, what's this? So it's not showing. So you ask the students to first practice. Oh, it's an eraser. Okay, so check your answer. If you answered correctly, mark okay. So it's a good way for them to practice and study independently also. So any questions so far? 
I like your questions because they help me also to to show you something if I'm maybe I'm forgetting something. So let's see. I'm going to add one more. So if I'm here on the main page of my game and I think I need to create more. Ah, another thing that I forgot to mention, Bamboozle will let you create 24 questions and images, okay? That's the maximum. So it's only 24. So you can create, I usually do like between 10 and 12 or even 24 I have used. Okay, um, I'm not sure about the price for the paid version, but you can also check, let's see here. Let's go to games, it says upgrade. So oh, here, if you click on the waffle here, you click pricing, it will show there. Let's see. Oh, there you go. It's $4.99 a month or yearly $59.88. So there's another option too. Oh, you don't pay yearly. If you don't pay yearly, you can pay $7.99 a month. And what, yeah, that's a wonderful question. Can we import games from other websites? Yes, you can, but I have not, I haven't done that yet. So as I said, I'm in the very basic use of uh, Bamboozle and, the, and uh, because I don't have, uh, I haven't created games from on Kahoot or quizzes because I think it imports from Kahoot and quizzes and I haven't done that. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not familiar with how you would uh, import games, but I know it does. And it's probably really great because you create one game and then you just uh, use it in many different formats. Thank you for the question, yes. Um, yes, you can. So uh, Suzanne is asking if she can save a game that she found on search on her library. You can. So let's suppose, let me go to the main page here, okay? And I really like, let's suppose, let me choose one here. Let's see this one. So let's say I really liked this game and I want to save it for later. I wanna use it later. So you have here, you click on like. When you click on like, it's going to show on your, I think when you, on your favorites and here you can save it too. So you can create a folder. So you click on save and then you, cre you create a new folder. Oh, but it's with unlimited bamboozle. What I usually do, I save the links. I, I, I click on share, okay? And I copy the link. Once I copy the link, I save on my favorites. So I always have that. So one idea is you can create a, a bookmark on your computer and you can name it Bamboozle Games and you have all the ones that you like there. But yeah, let me see something just to make sure I'm answering your, your question accu accurately. Um, see, if I click here on likes on my page, yes, it will show the one that I liked. So it's saved, right? So I clicked on like, so let me do it again. So let's go back to games. So I'm going to choose one here, another one. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do this first one here. So I want to, let's suppose I liked it and I wanna save it. So you just click on the like on the heart. You click on the heart and now when you go to your games okay when you go to your life to your games not library you go here on games you click on games you are going to sorry no it's here under my library sorry i don't do that very often but you go to my library you click on likes and you will see the game there i'm so sorry yeah so it's just reviewing you click on your you go to your my library 
and then you click likes and you are going to see all the ones that you have liked. Okay. So once you save the game you created, do you get a link? No, you don't get a link, but you go back to your library and the game is there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you click on your game and then there, there is the option to share. So click here on share. You can share to your Google Classroom or to Facebook, social medias and, and media. And you can also uh, copy the, 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 the link. So once you copy the link, game link copied, so you can paste or send it to someone. This one, the class pin is for people who use the upgrade version also. You can share the pin with your students and they can play the games like tic-tac-toe, all those games also. So, so how do you like it? Do you like it? Do you think it's useful? Let's see here. So what I do, I usually copy the link. So I come here to share and I copy the link and I paste it to my Google Slides presentation because that's what I use to, to plan my lessons. So I really like um, to always have, I use Google's, Google Slides to, to prepare my lessons because then when I teach that lesson again, I go back and I can find the links that I like. I have everything saved in one place. So it's really great. Yeah, I'm so glad you enjoy, you like it because I, I, I really enjoy it because as I said, the visual part, Unfortunately, yes, there are some limitations if you're not if you're on the free version. But my uh, my goal was mainly to share with you uh, that there is the resource available, right? That you can use, and also that you can um, create your own material. And if now that you have your your own Bamboozle account, if you want, you can follow me. So you can click here on following. So once you click on following, you can um, follow my page. So you click on following and you will follow me. So whenever I publish something, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get some water. So once you save, uh, you follow me, you will get updates about my, about my, 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 my games, the games that I prepare and I make available here. Yes, it is really great. If you, you can prepare, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, excuse me, it's so dry. My throat is kind of uh, scratchy. So yeah, for end of term review is great because you can maybe create like three questions for each unit or four questions for each, for each lesson and the students will revisit all that he, they had learned previously. So now that I have the game here, so if I wanna play, I'm gonna click here on play. And I'm, as I said before, I don't have the access to the other options, but I can use the play for free. Now, I usually use two teams, so I'm gonna click on two and classic. So the quiz is only questions, see? So here, for example, it actually it's not so different from the other one, but uh, the classic one, so once you click, it shows the question. Once the students answer, you click OK or oops, and you can play. You can also, what I do also to review content, I click, oh, this one is, uh, so the power apps that I was talking about. So students sometimes will choose a number and will show, give five points. So they give points to the other team. And sometimes it says reset score. 
So it resets for everybody and everybody's so sad. And then it's like starting all over. So that's the fun part of it too, because they, they end up like feeling that they're winning and that they're not winning anymore. And then comes the competition, who's going to win? So this one, for example, if I click that they got it wrong, it will show. So it keeps showing the points there. So the points, let me click on them all. So you see how it ends. And then go to first place. So sometimes the team is really winning. They are like 120 points and they go and they lose their, their points. So the other team goes to first place and then it's fun. So this is what I like too. So at the end, they show this GIF and uh, it's funny. And then there's the review option. So you click here and you can review. And I usually work on pronunciation with the students. So we read the sentences, we work on pronunciation. So it's, um, it has different features that allows you to review in many ways. Yeah, I am so glad you enjoy it. And look, um, I'm going to go back. Just please tell me, were you able to create or at least to start yours? And uh, if you want, you can share the link. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. So if you want, you can share the link to your game on the chat box, in the, in the chat box. So we can um, take a look. Um, I have a Padlet, let me go here. This is my, power, my PowerPoint presentation is mostly what I showed you in practice. So, so I will show you the Padlet so you can add to our Padlet. So I created this Padlet. So this is me after playing Bamboozle with my students. So we are all happy and I asked them to take a picture and uh, this was, um, this is a really great group that I teach. So I asked them to take a picture. And uh, here is the Padlet. I have the link. Let me get the link and send you in the chat box. So if you were able to create, if you didn't, that's fine too. You can always come back to the Padlet and add um, your game there. Uh -huh. So let me send you the link. Oh, I sent as direct message. Let me send to everybody. There you go. So now you have the Padlet. Once you create, and if you would like to share with everybody, just use the Padlet and you can click here. I see you on there. Let me take a look. Oh, that's beautiful. So she has a backpack. It is. I love it. It's so gorgeous. My brother brought a, bought a new car. It's his car. My wife and I purchased a condo. That condo is ours. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you. I'm gonna sh I'm going to follow you. So I have here. So I'm going to click on follow. And I'm following you. Uh, thank you, Krista. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. That's super. I'm going to use it for sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did you, can you still see my screen? Because I think I was showing here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so this is what Krista created. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, Let's see here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just showing the QR code. Yes, let me share the Padlet. I sent in the chat box the link to the Padlet. And there is also, let me stop sharing and get the QR code. And go back to the QR code. There you go. So this is the QR code for the Padlet.